thing in the background. Okay, so we're live. So first of all, this is Peter Drew, creator of Art and Reality. Can I say you're the creator of, or did you have some collaborators in that video? Yeah, two collaborators, Roddy Chin and Fraser Dempsey, and they um, uh, helped direct and shoot it. So, um, I mean, it was, it was my idea to begin with. I mean, those guys don't really have a not background, but in terms of uh, video production, they were, you know, very much involved in the whole thing. So, for those who don't know, how would you describe the series? Uh, well, I play a disgruntled art critic who uh, realizes that he's no longer relevant than he wants to. He perhaps had a TV show, um, but because the uh, the age of television is sort of dying. Um, he has gone online to find his audience there. Um, and and he's also annoyed because the art world doesn't really need him anymore because, um, as we say in the series, uh, in a world where anything can be art, who needs the guy that can tell the difference? So it's we use his position as a way of examining the art world today. So your background is art, is that correct? Uh, yeah, well, I, I, I came to it through... Um, uh, I studied um, uh, psychology and started practicing as an artist, and then um, I uh, make street art, um, do lots of sort of large uh, paste-up campaigns with uh, posters, and then um, last year I went uh, back to uni and did um, uh, a master's at um, Glasgow School of Art. At where? Pardon? Uh, the Glasgow School of Art. Glasgow School of Art. Okay. All right. So, um, so, what was your? So, you're, were you a little boy saying one day I'm going to grow up and be an artist? How did you come to that? Um, I came to it through studying uh, psychology, I think, and philosophy. Just, um, yeah, I, I, I was actually that's right. I was, um, I was about a couple of months into my philosophy honours and I had an offer to do a um, gallery exhibition and then started it that way um, and I just realised that maybe I can uh, sort of survive as a, um, as a practicing artist but, um, but in terms of art versus reality how I, uh, that began was halfway through last year doing, the, um, doing my masters at the Glasgow School of Art um, <clears throat> I was, I was studying, um, putting together a thesis on, on street art and how street art can work with institutions and the difficulty of that. And I was watching lots of... Sorry, my phone just spoke to me. Hold on, go on. Sorry, you're working, you said you were working a thesis at Glasgow about, about on street the, art. Yeah, about, um, about street art and how street art can work with institutions. And... I think everyone must experience this when they're working on their thesis and they suddenly become really interested in other things. And um, and uh, going back to um, the shock of the new and watching lots of that, because um, Robert Hughes had died sort of about a year previously. And I just and I and that was sort of my alternative thesis in my mind that I was I was studying it and just sort of and looking at the differences, how televised art criticism had had evolved and and I thought, I really, really want to do something on this, but I'm already too far ahead um, with my other thesis. And that's sort of how our version of that came about. Um, um, yeah, because I, because I was getting sick of my thesis, basically. Being, what, were you getting bored with your thesis? Yeah, just just getting um, just fed up with it. Um, I was frustrated with the academic staff, but also it's just, I, I think... Uh, street art is naturally anti-institutional, and, and writing a thesis is a fundamentally institutional thing to do. So, um, uh, yeah, there was just obvious tension there. So, um, you had a statistic that you present in the beginning of the series about the number of people who actually go to art school, spend lots of money doing that, and mm -hmm. then after, or within four years, no longer, no longer, not only are no longer making art, but they're not going to again, and then there's, I think, what percentage was that? Um, we, the one we had in the series, uh, uh, this is how that came about. That was actually uh, sort of, based, uh, that's basically anecdotal. Um, I have I have read a, a couple of 
studies about that. The, the, the one thing that we had quoted to us at our art school and have had other um, friends who are students, uh, they were told that 2% uh, of... Um, Two percent was the the figure that they kept told kept, kept getting told by their um their teachers just to sort of let them know that only two percent of you are actually going to go on to to fill that one spot of being artists. There are all these other jobs in the industry, and then there's all these other you. And then a lot of you won't actually work in the arts um, because there's no sort of worldwide study about sort of how uh, how effective art school is. Um, and it's not really, it's not necessarily a discouraging thing, it's just sort of this um, delusion about you go to art school, you become an artist, whereas there are all these other sort of, you know, sort of support industries around that. Um, but I think it's still quite a, um, it's sort of, you hear that statistic, even though we, we, we thought, okay, 2% is actually, it's too hard to believe that, we need to, so we, we made it much less in the actual series. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it's, I think it was just a powerful tool, sort of jolting people out of that belief of, um, oh, this is going to be great, I'll graduate, and then I'm just going to be, you know, then I'll pull off the gallery, and, you know, and away I go on my... And they'll save day. you. The galleries will save you, they'll discover you, and they'll take care of all of that business mumbo-jumbo so that you can just be your fabulous... Exactly, because exactly, art schools don't, <laughs> don't teach you that. They just sort of feed the... Um, the delusion of oh I'm an artist and it's about me creating things. It's not about me sort of figuring out how to fit them into the world in a um, in a economic sense. So all right, that right there is a golden nugget. Uh, in, it, they do teach you. It's oriented to make you think it is all about you and all about your fabulous self or your creative musings, without mm. any regard to what value you may or may not bring to the marketplace or another human being. Yeah, because that's a that's an appealing idea. I mean, that that gets that gets tuition fees right paid for the art school. Right. So, um, are you making art now? Yeah, I'm. Um, I'm actually in the middle of uh, fulfilling a commission. The way the way my practice works um, practically is that I I do public art commissions, um, and from which I can earn enough money to then pay for other projects which I find more satisfying. <laughs> Although the public art commissions, the one I'm doing um, this week is a uh, actually a, a shop front which I'm installing a um, with an installation which I, I really I'm enjoying it but um but I'm gonna use that money to make some more episodes of Art vs. Reality and also um, uh, put together a pitch for a documentary that we're making the same team. So, uh, and also, I mean, I also use that sort of money for um, uh, for street art projects. But uh, to be honest, it's only uh, last week that I left my job in in hospitality. I've been working in a in various kitchens for about ten years. So that's also how I support my practice. So. Um, yeah. So it's interesting you use the word practice, because I always challenge artists. So give you, do, I don't know if you know anything about me, I'll give you a little bit of background, but um, I'm a painter here in San Francisco, and um, I determined that I'd move to San Francisco where I knew no one, I'd make $100,000 in my first year. And that was in 2005, which I did. I exceeded right. the amount, and then I received some sig nice press, and artists started to come to me asking for help. And so I decided that one day a week I would help other artists understand the mechanics of business because it is business. Make no frickin' mistake, it's business. So um, I'm always really tuned into the words that people use, like practice versus business, right? Or versus practice oh. enterprise. Um, but what's wonderful is you, it sounds like you really, I mean, you look like you're having a blast making art versus reality and it spawned another project. And you're starting to hopefully from that gain some momentum and a little bit of a platform to speak to speak from. So, with, when you talk about extending the series or this new project that spun off, what where do you see that going? What's what's your what is your what creative interest are you following? What value are you going to offer the world more poignantly? Right. Well, I, I guess um, 
Yeah, this is a really interesting way to approach it, but I think um, I going back to what I said about Robert Hughes and, and um, TV articles, and back when I was just watching a lot of it and studying and seeing how it was evolving, I I thought um, this is sort of a tradition that I want to contribute to in some way, but it needs to be a new step. It needs to evolve in some way, and you know, it needs to have humour and the other things that are going to make it work on for, for this generation on the internet. So I didn't know how to do that. I just thought uh, that I could do it, and that also that I, I needed to build the skills in order to do it. And I was prepared to put some of my own money behind it and to uh, work with guys that I trusted and um, that I knew they would get something out of it as well in terms of um, learning experience. So we just committed to do it and um, and uh, after we'd done it, then we could show people and, and hopefully we could uh, uh, get paid to do some more to do something better. And well, I, really, I really loved it. That's why I reached out to you. I thought it was wonderful. I thought it was brilliant. And it spoke to so many things that I'm talking about all the time. I, I feel like art um, has become, you know, became irrelevant to a number of people and they needed these, you needed critics to justify it in many ways and interpret its value in many ways. Hmm. That's my view of it, and that's why I think. And I think you know, it, it speaks. It speaks volumes when I say my favorite, and I mean it. It's actually my favorite piece is in the San Francisco Modern Museum of Art. Is a relief um, sculpture of a, of an elephant with made of elephant dung and sparkles. Like that. Like there's something like that. That's that's my favorite, and that's um, I had to reach to make that my favorite. I think we're we've, we've somehow we've lost sight of how art really um, is meant to connect us with our humanity, to make to lead new thought, and to you know ignite revolutions. It somehow is just I feel deteriorated, and not in every corner. Like I uh, Ai Weiwei has a an installation here in San Francisco at Alcatraz, which is you know, a really insightful and provocative um, commentary on totalitarianism in, in China. So he's actually creating value above and beyond his art. And this is the this is what I'm always looking for. It's like where are artists um, coming to from coming to making art and creating value above and beyond their art, beyond their own selfish interests. Sure. We have to serve our own creativity and selfish, and you know we have to be we have to serve our own creative satisfaction, or we're not going to do it. Like your thesis, you got bored, right? And you wound up actually was, you wound up actually doing something quite interesting as a result of that boredom. So we have to be interested in it ourselves. And I think the the service that you offered above and beyond the video art itself was that you told the truth, which was so refreshing. We all know this. When we're going to art school and paying these tuition fees, and we just hope somehow it's going to work out for us, but it doesn't. I don't know about your, I don't know about the the um, research behind your statistics, but I think it's probably pretty close. Because after four years, I was no longer making any art after I graduated from art school, so it was immediately relatable, and I loved it. So um, I promise well, you. Go ahead. So I was just going to say, well, also. Um, well, I was really inspired by a guy called uh, Hennessy Youngman, who's, um, uh, that was his, his created name, but he made a lot of uh, YouTube videos um, in the, the year prior to when we started. But he sort of did the same thing of uh, adopting a character and really terrific videos. So if you look up Hennessy Youngman, he oh. has a, a very, sort of a different approach to it, but um, he, um, yeah, it was just terrific. So that, that inspired us a lot, yeah. So you talked about another project that was inspired by art versus reality. What can you give us a little bit of uh, uh, insight about what that project might be about? Oh, that we're doing that's coming next. Or? Yeah. Um, well, we're uh, at the, just about to shoot uh, a couple new episodes of art versus reality. We're not going to do very many, but I mean, we, as we'd hoped, um, we were contacted by. Uh, a couple of producers to sort of to, uh, to make art versus reality into something more, something that we don't have to pay for, or something we could we could um, uh, live off. But um, it has to sort of it has to change a little bit more. I think 
it's almost going more towards what the title actually is in in terms of art versus reality, using art to uh, understand the world um, and make it less sort of academic about understanding the art world, more um, sort of current events that uh, we only really get churned up through the news, but if you look at it through the in the context of art history, something like uh, ISIS or feminism or climate change, it's a lot more interesting looking at it through the lens of art than it is just having uh, news anchors give you the headlines. It's um, right. So, so that's kind of how, the direction that we'd like it to evolve. Okay. So, um, are you looking for? Are you interested in increasing your subscribers on YouTube, or is there a place where people could visit to learn more? Uh, probably the best way to follow us is just on our. Facebook page, but yeah, if you, you describe, uh, subscribe on YouTube, and that's, that's how you're going to see the videos fastest. And why don't you mention what your Facebook page is in case people are interested in um, connecting? Also, oh, it's just art versus reality on okay. Facebook. Okay. All right. Well, I look forward to the new episodes very much. Please keep me. Um, Please keep me on your list of. Uh, I've just I just thought they were lovely, brilliant, and funny, and it looked like you're having fun. And um, I've shared them, and I'm uh, going to be uh, on Creative Live for 30 days. Um, we're taping the first episode on the t first part's taped. That's going to actually happen uh, tomorrow, and I'll be sure to mention art versus reality. Terrific. You have to do the rest. You have to do the rest because they're going to be looking for it. <laughs> All right then. Thank you so much, Peter. I really appreciate your time. And Thanks a lot. Connected. Sorry about the mess. That's no, <laughs> all right. I'm I, I'm not looking at your mess. I'm, I'm interested in the conversation. <laughs> all right. Have a great day. You too. See you all later. Right, bye. Bye.